Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Reacting Reddit, where real humans read, react, and summarize trending stuff for you using comments on Reddit to better explain the topics. Today we're going to be talking about oatmeal, because for some reason, uh, oatmeal is trending right now on Twitter. Like, the concept of oatmeal. I couldn't figure out why. I, I guess that happens when, like, famous people and really popular influencers do stuff. You know, and then a bunch of people talk about this, the subject of whatever they did. And right now that's happening with oatmeal. Like, literally, I was looking at the trends and then it was just pictures of oatmeal and people talking about oatmeal and articles to oatmeal. But oatmeal's great, so that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we live in a point where, yeah, well, like one in 40 trends is a, the concept itself of a very healthy, useful food. So let's get into it. The first reply is by SDTHGD. There are several reasons. Oats have a reasonably high protein content with equal gains. They contain a fiber, beta-glucan, believed to dull appetite and increase the sensation of fullness post-meal. They are cheap, fast, and incredibly easy to prepare. I'm sure their low-fat content has something to do with it and the ability to turn oats into cookies or flapjacks. Oats are amazing. Oatmeal pancakes, huh? That sounds interesting. I, I like pancakes in the morning. Like, I could probably get on that, eating some like healthier pancakes and some eggs or something. Yeah, trying to get away from meat. I'm not a vegetarian, but I see if, uh, basically, if I eat as few calories a day as possible and meet as many needs, nutritional needs I have as possible, like I balance, that's how you live the longest. You don't want to be eating thousands and thousands of calories every day, even if it's healthy food. Um, you want to eat as few calories as possible while still meeting all of your needs, basically. So that should be your goal. At least that's, that's, that's how I, I think nutrition works. JT says, for people who didn't read biochemistry, fiber is really good because it traps bile acid. Bile acid is synthesized from cholesterol. Normally, bile acid is reestablished but when you eat fiber, it helps to reduce your cholesterol levels. I've heard that before, actually. I think that's true. I don't know if it's completely accurate that cholesterol gets reduced because of something being made out of the cholesterol. Because um, you have to keep in mind that in general, people particularly, actually most, most people in the world, uh, they eat a lot of cheaper food that's higher in salt, fat, sugar, or, or cholesterol. So when someone starts eating oatmeal um, regularly, they're not just eating oatmeal in addition to everything they ate before. They're, they're obviously replacing uh, some meal they used to eat with oatmeal. They're not going to be just eating the same amount and also eating oatmeal. They'll eat oatmeal for breakfast instead of like, you know, bacon and eggs or, or something like that, right? And so it's not as simple as like, what we know for sure is that when you eat oatmeal every day, you have lower cholesterol than people who don't eat oatmeal every day. But that doesn't mean that oatmeal causes your cholesterol directly to get reduced. You can't make that assumption. Because what it means is there's a correlation between people who eat oatmeal every day and low rates of heart disease, right? So usually this is caused by indirect things, right? So the oatmeal can end up causing less heart disease even if oatmeal itself doesn't eliminate cholesterol. For example, if oatmeal doesn't make your cholesterol worse and you're replacing uh, foods and meals that you eat a lot of cholesterol with oatmeal, well, then you're gonna have lower cholesterol even though oatmeal does nothing to cholesterol, right? So that, that's pretty common in food, and you have to keep that in mind regarding people's diets. Abra Cement says, Oats are popular because they are super versatile. I've made some ridiculously good meals with oats, and they are extremely cheap. They are high in carbs, but low in fat, and also have a lot of fiber, so can help with feeling full. Protein isn't everything. Also, pro-oats, and overnight oats, and grind up the oats to make flour to make brownies. That's why they're good. Oh, this person has a lot of different uses for oats, huh? Oh, that's right, we have memes now. Oh, that's great. Look at this. 
<laughs> I can make them high five. Does it go one, two, three? Ah, oh, it does it randomly. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, moving on. Sorry about that, guys. Savory oats are my favorite. I can't stand sweet breakfasts. So I usually mix up some rolled oats, water, spring onion, soy sauce, and chuck a gooey fried egg on top. Some sriracha on the side. Amazing. What? <laughs> what? I, I've never heard of somebody making their oatmeal that way. That, that freaking blows my mind. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Let me read that again. I usually mix up some rolled oats, water. Okay, I'm with you there. Rolled oats, water, nice. Spring onion, green, okay. Soy sauce, okay. Gooey fried egg, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that definitely sounds savory, holy crap. Uh, so that would actually be, you'd, you'd, you'd get more protein there. Yeah, having an egg and oatmeal is, uh, yeah, gold. There's a lot of debate about whether cholesterol is like actually bad for you now, increasingly. It's like, or at least thinking of it as a bad thing isn't good. It's something that's bad in excess, but yeah, it's complicated, right? PM me your quad says, what is the difference between oats and oatmeal? What are the rolled oats? Well, rolled oats and steel cut oats and all these kind of oats, it's just a different way to cut the oats, basically. And it changes how long they cook. So they could cook for, <laughs> they could cook for like 10 minutes, or if they're instant cut for instant oats, for example, they've been cut up into small pieces, cooked, and then dried. So all you're really doing is warming them up because they're already cooked. And it's also debatable. You don't want to cook oatmeal too long because the more you cook it, it like boils down the nutrients more and it can actually do that. You want that a little bit because it makes it more bioavailable, but if you do it too much, it degrades them. So they're like destroyed and not useful basically. And you don't want that. You want useful, useful nutrients. This comment by the Crimson Glass says, oats, just the plain oat. Rolled oats. The oats are rolled between rollers, flattening them. This is what you're probably familiar with. They are flat, oval oats that you probably ate as a kid. Steel cut oats. Instead of rolling the oats, the oats are cut with a steel blade. It makes them smaller, that's all. So instead of being flat, they maintain their general shape, but they're cut up. Oatmeal. Cooked oats. They can be rolled or steel cut. It doesn't matter, it is still oatmeal. Rolled oats are generally mushier than steel cut, and steel cut have a much more texture. This is why steel cut oats are often recommended over rolled oats. There's nothing nutritionally different between rolled and steel cut oats. They have the same calories and macros per weight, the same fiber, the same everything. It's just a change in the texture and the cooking time. Yeah, totally agree. Oatmeal, oatmeal's freaking awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> That meme was pretty long. <laughs> Redstone Freedom says, oats do not have low protein content. It's a foolish comment to make of, but only have five grams protein per half cup. I wanna point out that, so this, this person's saying that oats are a protein rich food and that they're, that's true. So oats like, they provide like a serving of oats is like 12% of your protein, right? So for people who are interested in bulk and muscle building, they obsess about protein and try and eat as much protein as possible. So to an individual like that, looking at oats, it's not a protein dense food, right? Because it, it, oats are mostly carbohydrate and they have protein as well, right? Which is actually, uh, believe it or not, the ratio of carbohydrate and oats and protein, it's, it's just a tiny bit shy of what a human actually needs. We need mostly carbs and then some proteins and some other things. And oatmeal has just a little bit less proteins on average than you should have. So if you just eat like one protein food with oatmeal, like an egg or basically any other um, thing like oats, any other whole kernel like that that has a different 
protein profile? Because what you have to understand about protein is that protein is a misleading concept. We say like, oh yeah, this is a protein enriched food. This is a not protein enriched food. But you can actually eat certain kinds of protein rich foods every day and eat nothing else. And you will have a protein deficiency because protein isn't just protein. If that makes sense, not all proteins are the same. Protein is a generic concept that is kind of taught in a foolish way, really, because proteins are made of amino acids. So you can think that there's like 13 or 14, however many amino acids, and there are like little proteins and you need all of them, right? So one protein that you call protein might have six of these amino acids and it has lots of them, but it has none of the other amino acids that you need. And that's why it's misleading to just think of it as protein, because you can eat a lot of the wrong kinds of protein and be lacking the proteins that you need and force your body to have to make them in, in unproductive and inefficient ways, right? So what you want to what you want to keep in mind is the 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 amino acid profile of the proteins that you're eating. You have to know, okay, this food has a wide diversity of amino acids and it's often better to eat food that has less protein but it has like 10 or 12 of the total amino acids because you, you can eat something that's very protein dense for example that only has three of those amino acids and you can trick yourself into thinking you're getting enough protein but you're actually not so what you want to be doing is eating these proteins that have a wide, a diverse base, basically, of amino acids. And oats is one of those. It's, it's just missing a couple amino acids. So you just need to learn about those, figure out what the amino acid profile is. And unfortunately, getting that information is really hard. That's kind of what sucks. If you look into American food, um, you see that most of the things that the American public conceptualizes as healthy have been uh, lobbied and marketed to be that way. Like the food pyramid itself was originally made by nutritionalists and then lobbyists completely rewrote it and changed it exponentially. And it's it's all like, you know, been marketing hype that you... What? Ah, I just did something. Sorry about that. <laughs> so let's get on with Redstone Freedom's comment. This was, again, originally posting in response to someone who's saying that oats don't have low protein content. It's a foolish comment to make, but they only have five grams of protein per half cup. They have a gram of protein per 20 calories, which means if you only ate oats, you would reach them. It's possible to. Seeing as this amount of protein more than fulfills the general rule of maximizing synthesis by reaching seven or 0.7 grams of protein per body weight, unless you're over 200 pounds lean mass, there's very little, little to worry about and almost no grounds for saying they are low in protein content. As for optimizing diet, it is much more often the case that someone is not feeding their body enough calories, not that they aren't getting enough protein, although surplus protein can, to an extent, sub in for those calories. Hmm. Rule number 303 says it is easy to get completely sick of something if you are using it to bulk. If you get sick of oats, it isn't going to fuck up your ability to eat normal food the rest of the time. I mean, get sick of pasta or rice, and there goes half of your mother's home-cooked meals, right? <laughs> they cook easily without need for careful timing, unlike pasta. And if you get the proportions wrong, it is easy to just add more oatmeal or more water and still get a good result, unlike rice. They store well on the shelf in a closed container, unlike potatoes or bread, and they are cheap, unlike most higher protein foods and available. Their fiber level is good too. Yeah, fibers, fiber personally is my favorite nutrient. If you wanna focus on any nutrient that you should get more of in your life, any vitamin or nutrient that's most important to you, basically it goes fiber. Why is fiber so important? It's indirectly important because fiber is the only nutrient that will give you more time to live your life by reducing the amount of time you spend pooping. And it's real, it's true. If you find that you spend more time pooping than you spend peeing, like really your time pooping and time peeing, believe it or not, they should be the same. 
And if your time pooping is longer than your time peeing, that means you probably don't get enough fiber because when you have a fibrous diet, ooh, soof, those things just roll out like, like snowballs down a hill, easy and smooth. It almost looks like you look at them and you're like, dang, how is that so big? How is that inside me? Crazy, right? Fiber is an amazing nutrient. It's the only one that eating it today will give you more time to live your life tomorrow. None of the other nutrients work that fast, but fiber's physical, it's guttural, it's real, it's raw. Fiber, fiber is what you want more of in your life, trust me. QXCVR says, I like them because they make me, <laughs> they make me poop. Nothing feels better than pounding a cup of coffee after a good night's rest than dropping a giant turd off in the shitter. Sorry if that was not the answer you were looking for. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I, I, that's the answer I was looking for. I totally agree. Fiber is the best. Corey307 says, high in fiber, extremely cheap, easy to prepare or add to foods, and it keeps you full. Seriously, try to eat 600 cal worth of plain quick oats. It's near impossible. One cup, wow, one cup of raw quick oats, one cup, 2% milk, five extra large eggs, and three ounces of ground beef. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cut three egg yolks and it's 800 cal and 75 grams of protein. Good luck eating all of that. I'm so obtuse. Like anytime, anytime, anytime that someone says to add one of those crazy things, it, it gets me. I'm like thinking of oatmeal and soy sauce and oatmeal and like ground beef. <laughs> it's to me, that's like what I fed my dogs. So like I just think of dog food, but I think of chicken, pork, and any meat as dog food. So. <laughs> Oh, man. Stewer69 says cheap. Dirt cheap compared to cereal, etc. It's healthy. Keeps you regular. Easy. So easy to cook. Tasty. Also takes on other flavors easily. Do you really need another reason? <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong meme. I don't know how to do these memes very well yet. I'm trying to find yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. High five, yeah. <laughs> Good reasons. Tauros FCP says, while we're on the topic, how do you all prepare your oats exactly? The Crimson Glass says, I'm pretty lazy and I eat them at work. So I just put them in a big old coffee mug with water and I microwave it. I wait until the water is boiling and take it out the microwave before it all boils over. <laughs> you have to watch it because you've only got about five seconds once it starts boiling. Yeah, if you, if you have milk, it'll do that even sooner. Mix in some frozen fruit, I like blueberries, for some flavor and extra nutri nutrients. The fruit will be thawed by the oatmeal and it'll cool down the oatmeal for you. Ah, so they cook it and then mix in the frozen fruit. Interesting. I like blueberries a lot too. I used to think they were lame because a blueberry itself doesn't actually have that much flavor in it compared to like, you know, a blackberry or a raspberry or a strawberry or like basically all the other berries. But their name is so fitting. The name of blueberry, it's just perfectly fitting, you know? It really like, it, it is blue. And if you put it in things, it makes them blue. I love it. I think it's amazing. Fatty, fatty, nasty, fatty says, <laughs> <laughs> Great username. <laughs> I like fruit smoothies with oats to get my carbs in the morning. So I usually drink the smoothie while eating my fat or protein. Usually eggs or Greek yogurt with nuts or seeds in it. I have a feeling this person isn't large, uh, despite their username. <laughs> you can create your own recipe with a basic formula of smoothie equals one half cups oats plus one and a half one to two cups of water, plus two servings of fruit. Experiment it from there. Example, half a cup of oats, one and a half cups of water, one apple, a frozen banana, one quarter teaspoon cinnamon. If you replace the banana with mango, replace the water with milk, and add a scoop of vanilla whey. This thing will taste like an apple pie a la mode. 
Only reason I don't do this more is I hate peeling mangoes. <laughs> Funny to talk about mangoes because in most places in the world, mangoes are, you know, exotic. In Japan, they're really expensive. Here in Nicaragua, mangoes are everywhere. I have a mango tree in my backyard and I am like half of the year just bombarded every day with mangoes. Like I wake up in the middle of the night here and dunk, dunk, dunk. And I'm like, oh God, what's happening? Who's, who's here? Am I getting robbed? No, it's just getting mangoes falling on the tree on my roof over and over and over again. And there's literally hundreds and hundreds per tree. At the peak of the season, a tree will drop 30 to 40 mangoes per day. It's intense. Like when, when it's off season and I don't have any mangoes, I'm sad. But I will say that in the peak of the mango season, I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm scared. I don't know what to do about the huge pile of mangoes in my backyard and all of the nasty things growing in it and all of the bugs and all of the things, but also all of the cute, beautiful mango plant babies growing out of the pile. Mangoes are just these fertile seeds of life. They're so crazy. They fall on the ground. They're all sweet. And if something doesn't eat them, bugs eat them, and they get rid of all the stuff, and then it has this hairy little mango husk, and the seed survives, and it needed all, the, all those bugs to eat all the stuff, you know? And then it just, boom, mango. And they can live out of that seed. The plant will grow without any water or anything else for months. It's super cool. I have a bunch of them because of the mango situation. Smaller than says, well, regarding how to prepare your oatmeal, I add salt, cinnamon, butter, chia seeds, and water. Microwave for two minutes and top with a little bit of maple syrup. Little Potato Sock says, for oats and oatmeal, is there any health benefit or preference for steel cut oats versus quick cut oats, or is it just a matter of taste or texture? <laughs> There's no difference. Yeah, unfortunately, there's there's no great informative difference um, about the different kinds of oatmeal. It's just a different taste and texture, basically. There's not too much more to it than that. You can get into like very slight differences between them, but it, it you should think of it as the same. Squirrelo says there is no nutritional difference between rolled oats, steel cut, or whole oats. It's more of a textual preference. The steel cut oats tend to have a uh, more texture to them, whereas the other oats tend to be more mushy. Rugby and beer says you need carbs, dude. Like, yeah, eat lots of protein, but not every food has to have a ton of protein. Yeah, focusing too much on protein can make you live a short life and have you die of a heart di heart disease. But don't worry, heart disease isn't the number one killer anymore. Nor is cancer. It's COVID. SitB8 says, it's a good long lasting low GI carb that you can make taste good pretty easily. That being said, oats are pretty pro-inflammatory, so I've always thought that the guy that chugs oats morning, noon, and night wouldn't have the best levels of inflammation, especially with heavy training. Oh, this is debatable, and as, as Kata Chip says, what are you talking about? Pro-inflammatory? That's a bunch of bullshit. It's food. The whole inflammatory food idea has no basis in science, aside from folks that actually have a gluten allergy or celiac disease, which is a, a small segment of the population. Well, yeah, they, this guy's onto something. So there actually are way more genetic conditions than celiacs that affect your ability to deal with food. Like, for example, if a person with a peanut allergy eats peanuts, they're going to have a very, very obvious inflammatory reaction in a very extreme way, way more extreme than some kind of food with an inflammatory response like dairy or milk, right? So that's important to keep in mind. Like, it's, there's totally tons of things that can be wrong with your body that prevent you from properly being able to digest something in food that leads to your body getting inflamed because of that. So this guy's right though, that saying oatmeal is inflammatory and you should worry about that is dumb, but he's wrong in the way that uh, there are people, tons of people aside from people who have celiac who have to be wary of food. Anybody with food allergies, which is a lot of people have food allergies, <laughs> like actual food allergies that can like, you know, just cause you have a food allergy doesn't gonna mean 
doesn't mean it can kill you, but some food allergies are intense enough that they can kill you. Like, especially if you get um, your throat to be swollen, that's usually how like a food allergy could kill you. It's like something getting inflamed and then blocking off breathing. Those are, those are the worst, the worst scenarios with food. And as long as you're not allergic to oatmeal, you definitely do not need to worry about that with oatmeal. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your time, effort, and attention. If you want to make this kind of content or make thumbnails like this with an almost purely automated tool, then please reach out to us. You can get our email address from our YouTube channel. Just do the CAPTCHA code under the For Business Increase section. And then send us an email saying hello. We want to set up a Zoom call with you. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!